since I've put out a video on my Turf and Timber YouTube channel. So because of that, I wanted to kind of give everyone an update as to what's been going on in the lawn since I've been gone. So it's been kind of a hot, not kind of, it has been a hot July and August, and now we're into September. Uh, fortunately, like today, we had some cooler temps. Uh, I think it got into the high 80s, which yeah, that's that's a lot cooler because lately it's been it's been let's see, I think mid to high 90s last week. A lot of humidity, so the heat index is well over 100. Uh, so anyway, with that, um, we've had a lot of stress out on the fescue right here. Um, I got some pretty stressed parts out there that'll show you. Uh, we also did deal with the army worm infestation, like a lot of the country had gone through. And I'll show you some of the damage on that. I have one part on the other side of my driveway. Horrendous. I mean, almost everything died. So, uh, anyway, so here we go. Let's do it. So here is one side of my front yard. Doesn't look too bad. Um, fescue over here did pretty well uh, for the most part. But again, you know, it, it did pretty well because it's got a lot of shade right here. It's got these giant trees, which, you know, help produce a lot of the heat. Same, same with over there on that side of the culvert is it gets a lot of shade. So you get a lot that gets uh, shielded from the sunlight. As you can see though, as we come over here, a little bit of a different story. So this side actually gets blocked by a lot of the house when the uh, afternoon sun kind of sets in. <clears throat> but then, I think I said this in one of my previous videos, I think it was the hydrotain video, is right here, and along the driveway gets a lot of heat stress. I mean, that afternoon sun just beats down right here um, in the afternoon. I mean, that sun is all through here. So I think that's what's attributed to most of it. Uh, like I said, we had an army worm infestation, which contributed to a lot of uh, some of the grass dying off around here, both Bermuda and fescue. Um, this is my, like I said, this is the fescue side of the yard. And this is along the driveway. And then look at that right there. Got some Bermuda trying to creep back in. Which, I mean, I can deal with that before I overseed here in about three or four weeks. But keep in mind, uh, when, I, when we first moved into this house, uh, this side of the yard right here, uh, this actually was all Bermuda all through here. So done what I can to transition that over to fescue as much as possible. You get some spots like here, like all of this, all of this right here used to all be Bermuda as well, and I just transitioned this last year. But as you can see, you get a lot of uh, Bermuda trying to grow back through of what has been fried off. I got some weeds through here. 
by no means is it perfect. But looking through the rest of the fescue on the other side of the culvert, I'm able to do some striping still. Not too bad. Uh, now I use the you know the difference. I push mow that over there still, and then on this side, I use my riding mower, obviously. Okay, so what I'm about to show you is uh, pretty devastating. I literally it happened. I want to say like within a day or two. I mean, it was fast. I looked out my window one day and I was just like, holy crap. So behind me is the army worm damage on the other side of the driveway. As you can see, a lot of it died off. Standing right here, you can see how much of it died off. You got some green trying to come back right through here and a little bit over there but yeah for the most part almost all of my fescue on this side of the yard uh, completely died off now it's not irrigated on this side um, as it is over here this side is irrigated um, all through all the way to the street and this side isn't so that also was a contributing factor however when we were starting to get our heat waves in july the the shaded fescue on this side actually held up pretty well and we were still getting some rain now as you can see it stays under shade almost 100 percent of the day um, and then as you back up you can see the bermuda on this side um, which actually needs some fertilizer. It's losing some color. And then this is the shaded region, which last year before I seeded for the first time, it was completely dirt. This was all dirt right here. And then once we get back out into the sunny part of the yard, it turns all Bermuda again. And then, of course, on this side, this is all Bermuda as well. All in the sunny part. Again, I need to put some uh, fertilizer down uh, to help darken it up. We got some light spots right there. It's been a little while since I put some fertilizer down on the Bermuda, but... <clears throat> But I think uh, maybe this next week I'll, I'll get to that. And then, of course, back there is some more shaded area. Got all my fescue going on over there. Earlier I was talking about overseeding, and uh, I'll look to do that uh, for my fescue. Not the Bermuda. <laughs> uh, just the fescue right here. I'm going to look to overseed in about three to four weeks. Um, I really need the temperatures to come back down um, pretty substantially, you know, for a consistent period of time. That way, I don't know if you can hear that motorcycle. Sorry. Anyway, I need uh, temps to come down pretty consistently uh, and substantially for a while. Um, you know, kind of cool off. I mean, we're still getting into the low 70s at night. And then by 10 o'clock in the morning, it's already 80 degrees. So, um, so anyway, I'm going to look for cooler temps before I put down any seed. Um, what I'm going to do this year is I'm just going to dethatch. I'm just going to dethatch and then I'm going to put some seed down. Uh, I may put a little bit of dirt down in some of the more bare areas that you see out there. Some peat moss too. Uh, but really your seed... Uh, after I dethatch, your seed just needs to make sure it gets that good seed to soil contact. That's what it's going to be looking for in order for, you know, it to really root in uh, and do well. Put down some starter fertilizer too. Uh, that'll go a long way. I know that uh, 
If you use any of the Green County fertilizer supplements, I know that Humic and uh, RGS goes a long way in uh, making sure that seed really takes off. And, uh, and then, yeah, of course, consistent watering. Uh, you don't want to oversaturate the yard. You don't want to oversaturate the seed too much because you could get wash away. Um, so you really just want to keep the seed moist. I know that's everybody's favorite word. Um, but yeah, keep the seed moist. What I typically do is I'll water three, maybe four times a day, depending on how warm it may get on that on a certain day. Uh, not for too long. I'll just put each zone at like seven minutes just to get enough to get that seed moist and to root down and open up and, and start to grow. I think uh, you should see germination. If you're seeding with fescue, you should see germination within like seven to 10 days. Usually I've gotten around that seven day mark and I've been able to see something start to sprout up, which is always exciting. <clears throat> and then um, consistently water for about I don't know what three weeks uh, I mean it's gonna be kind of subjective depending on where you live and on how well your seed is really taking off and I need a haircut that's what my wife tells me but um, you know once you once you get to a, a good height to where you think you you should mow um, then you know just take it easy you don't want to spend too much time in the yard on that first mow but again, hopefully I'll be able to get this all on video for you guys. That way you can kind of see my process and, um, and just kind of see how I do things for my yard. So I guess I do have some exciting news. Uh, one of the reasons I haven't been able to post uh, at all really in the past couple months is I've been pretty busy, like I said, like I'm sure most of you are, but I actually decided to start my own lawn care company. Uh, I really love to mow. I think like a lot, you know, if you're watching this video, you probably enjoy mowing as well. But uh, I just started a lawn care company just to do on the side. I do have a, a primary job that I do Monday through Friday during the day. So I have to find times uh, to, you know, pick up clients and, and mow their yards when I can. Uh, typically I'm filling up the weekends right now with clients, but uh, Turf and Timber, like the channel's name, is now also Turf and Timber Lawn Care, uh, servicing the Oklahoma City metro area. So really, uh, really exciting stuff, and, and hopefully I'll be able to grow that business as well, and uh, just have fun with it. And moving forward for this channel, you'll still see uh, some of what's going on here at the house as I do things to my own lawn. But I also want to start incorporating things that I do for my company as well. So when I go mow a yard for a, for a customer, I wanna be able to get footage of that, show you guys uh, how I do things with my lawn care company, and um, really just have you guys along for the ride and just kinda of grow with me. Cause I am starting out small. Right now I'm trying not to take customers over half an acre uh, yard because um, all I have is my Toro Time Master um, that I that I use to mow yards with so anyway just gonna grow with that and hopefully you guys you know jump along for the ride and uh, I look forward to closing out this lawn care season really strong and uh, preparing for the 2022 lawn care season and uh, hopefully a lot of good things to come for this channel as well so I appreciate you guys watching this. Please feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out, you know, with that whole YouTube algorithm. Uh, so anyway, I'll catch you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye. Just a quick peek at our front porch. My wife has already decided to decorate for fall. I mean, not a blamer. I'm looking forward to fall as well. But uh, it's a little hard to get pumped up about fall when the highs are still in the 90s. All right, catch you later. Peace.